Welcome to the weekly service recording from Watton Methodist Church for Sunday, July the 26th, 2020. If you're joining us from other parts of the Central Norfolk Circuit or from anywhere else, we're pleased to welcome you and hope that sharing in our weekly act of worship will be helpful and supportive in your Christian life. The short message this week is from Dee Moden, a local preacher who moved to Fakenham at the very start of the lockdown. The Bible readings are Matthew 13, verses 31 to 33 and 44 to 52, read by Paul Nettleship, and Romans 8, verses 26 to 39, read by Early Nettleship. Our opening hymn is number 31 from Hymns and Psalms, Come let us all unite and sing, God is love. And we're singing verses 1, 3 and 4. We come to God in prayer, and we're starting with a short prayer from John Scotus Eregina. Grant, O God, that we may be united to you and our neighbour with an undivided love. Serve you and your children with an undivided heart, and reverence you and your creation with an undivided will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we continue with some thoughts for your own prayers now and during the coming week. Say sorry to God for the time that you have hurt God, that you have hurt other people, and that you have hurt God's creation. Be assured of God's unconditional love for you and of his cleansing forgiveness that sets you free and once again gives you a fresh start. Amen. Matthew 13, verses 31 to 33 and 44 to 52. He then told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Although it is the smallest of all your seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of God's plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and perch on its branches. He then told them still another parable. 
The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into a large amount of flour until it was all through the dough. Verse 44. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then, in his joy, went and sold all he had, and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one, a great value, he went away and sold anything he had, and brought it. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up with his shore. Then they sat down and they created all the good fish in the baskets, but threw the bad ones away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angel will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fairy furnace where there will be a weeping and gushing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? Jesus asked. Yes, they replied. Then he said to them, Therefore, every teacher of the law who has been in chapter about the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of the house who brings out all of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. Thanks be to God. Our reading is taken from Romans 8, verses 26 to 39. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, that the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the minds of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints, in accordance with God's will, more than conquerors. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charges against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus who died. More than that, who was raised to life. Is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. In thinking about the readings in your quiet times during the week, have a go at rewording Romans 8 verses 35 to 37 for the contemporary situation. Then read the chapter to the end again and spend a moment or two in quiet reflection.
We sing again as we join together in number 254 from Singing the Faith, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Let's join together in prayer. We pray for all those who need to know that nothing separates them from God's love. We pray for our world, our country, the Methodist Church, our circuit, our local church and fellowship here in Watton, our community, our family and friends, and for ourselves. And we pray this week with Divine Changanya who is unable to graduate in the normal way this year and is currently based in Fakenham. I pray that the Lord will bless and guide all the primary, secondary, college and university students during this tough time. I pray that he blesses and gives peace and hope to all students receiving their grades or graduating in unusual fashions this year. I pray that he continues to set a pathway and bless those continuing with their studies. Furthermore, I pray that he keeps everyone safe from the coronavirus. Make his face shine on us. Be gracious to us. Turn his face towards us and give us his peace. Amen. And now in a moment of quiet, it's your chance to offer to God your offertory for the week. If it's cash, you may wish to put it aside in a special place for when we are back together.
The Lord's Prayer Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Greetings everyone. My name is Dee Moden. I'm a local preacher and my husband Alan and I have recently moved into this circuit to be near our family and we are living in Fakenham. My reflection is taken from the lectionary readings from Matthew and from Romans. Jesus always teaches in a way that can be understood about relevant everyday things. Today's reading from Matthew's Gospel follows that pattern as he speaks again, as in previous weeks, about seeds and growth. This time of year, we see the fruition of seeds that have been sown in our gardens, so we understand about how things grow for our benefit. The setting of small, seemingly insignificant seeds are now bringing us fruit, vegetables and flowers that we're able to enjoy and share with others too. Jesus refers to the kingdom of God when set like a small mustard seed, it grows and grows, providing shelter and refuge for all. Jesus also likens the kingdom of God to yeast when added to flour, rises and grows as it proves, and when cooked, making delicious tasting fresh bread to feed many. We, as those first disciples must, as Jesus told them, be patient as God nurtures the seeds within us, because as it grows, it becomes even more amazing and precious. This treasure is both life-giving and life-changing. And like any treasure, it is precious and we have to protect it and look after it, keeping our hearts and minds focused on it. Jesus also likens it to a pearl of great price. But of course, to us, The kingdom of God is priceless. In Paul's letter to the Romans, he speaks of God's love for us and the strength given to us through the Holy Spirit and how once we have received this love, nothing can separate us from it. And we can read that in chapter 8, verses 38 to 39. Being part of the kingdom of God is to be shared and enjoyed. We are all very different, as were the disciples. But we all have one mission, to love and serve, bringing the kingdom of God to those we meet.
Let us pray. It's a prayer taken from the prayer handbook written by Marjorie Kemp. Be to us at all times, O Lord, our unending joy, our eternal bliss, and our enduring comfort. Be to us light in the darkness, strength in temptation, and refreshment in the desert. Being penitent for our sins, may we never be separated from you, and longing for your face, may we behold you in heaven. Amen. Our closing hymn was written by Dee and is sung to the tune for the healing of the nations, number 696 in Singing the Faith, and it is Heavenly Father, Holy Spirit. May the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with us and all those we love, this day and always. Amen.